Akubo Finance is one of the largest DeFi protocols in the StarkNet ecosystem, and today they made a very interesting announcement that is hinting at an airdrop in 2024. So in today's video, I'm going to break down what they said, I'm going to talk about when I think the possible snapshot might actually occur, and I'm also going to walk you through a quick and simple tutorial on how you can actually use their platform to increase your points count and move up the leaderboard and therefore qualify for a larger amount in an airdrop. So for starters, on Twitter today, just a couple of hours ago, they released this where they said they're making a couple of upgrades to the platform, but they also hinted with this three question mark point here that something is gonna happen in Q1 and then in Q2 to Q4, they've suggested they're going to decentralize and open source. And what decentralized and open source usually means is some type of airdrop with a token and governance power going to early adopters and users of the platform. So that is the tweet. Very strongly hinting, in my opinion, and in the opinion of many other people, that there's an airdrop incoming. But what does that mean for the snapshot, and do you still have time to get in on this airdrop? Well, in my opinion, there's a very, very small chance that it's already been taken, but honestly, I don't think it has for two main reasons. The first is that their point system is still live, so you can still collect points by making swaps and providing liquidity on the platform. The second is that they're hinting at decentralizing and open sourcing in Q2 to Q4, which is at minimum three plus months from now, if not later in the year in 2024. They've given quite a wide range there. And so what I suspect actually is that the three question marks here that they're hinting at is that some sort of snapshot will occur late in Q1. They're saying the first extension is launching in February, March, and then after that, question mark. So I am speculating that the snapshot has not yet occurred and probably will happen at some point in March 2024, which means that there's still time to interact with the protocol and that I think it's still largely a positive EV play to make some swaps and to provide some liquidity. So that brings us to the next portion of the video, which is how do you actually do that? Now, this is what the basic Ekubo swap feature looks like. As you can see, it's very simple. In order to interact with it, you're going to need to have a StarkNet wallet. I'm using Argent X, and I've done other tutorials on how you can set up this wallet and fund it. But once you have a StarkNet wallet and you have some funds, some ETH in it, then you can use the swap feature here, and you can simply select what token you want to swap from and what token you want to swap to. And I recommend doing at least a couple of swaps here and leading up to the next few months, probably come back at least monthly, if not weekly, and make a swap or two to generate transaction count and transaction value. So I'm actually gonna do one swap here today from some ETH to USDC so that I can then take that and deposit it into the liquidity pools, which I will also walk you through. So let's say that I want to swap 0.05 ETH to USDC. I select the amount. I simply hit swap and then it pops up in my Argent X wallet asking me to confirm the transaction, which I will go ahead and do. Once the swap goes through, the next step is to go to the liquidity pool page and to create a position. Now, the thing with this is that the larger the deposit you make in a liquidity pool and the longer that you hold it in there, the more points you're gonna get and the faster you're gonna move up their leaderboard. However, even if they do have a tiered airdrop system, they will probably reward people at least at some minimum threshold, although we don't 100% know what that is. So the more that you can deposit, the better, but of course you have to understand the risks of doing this and you have to decide what you're comfortable risking in this liquidity pool. Anyways, if you are interested in making a deposit in the liquidity pool on Ekubo, I'll walk you through how it works. First, you have to hit create position. Now this part looks a little bit complicated and in some ways it kind of is. So let me walk you through it. The first thing that's important to know is that you need to have two assets in order to do this because you're providing liquidity to a pool that is facilitating swaps between a token pair. So in this case, I'm going to do ETH and USDC, but you can provide liquidity to basically any of the pairs on this list, you can see that the options are in here. So once you've decided which two assets you want to provide liquidity for, ETH USDC, by the way, is one of the largest ones and one of the safest ones. But once you decide which two assets you want to provide liquidity to, make sure that you have some of each asset in your StarkNet wallet. So I'm going to deposit $11 of USDC and an equivalent amount of ETH. Now, the next thing to decide is the fee tier. The fee, which is the first figure here, is what traders are charged when they want to make swaps against your pool. 
and the precision is showing that each one of these ticks is a 0.2% tick. So that's what it's meaning when it's talking about precision. Now, the important thing to know is that the tighter the fee and precision spread, the larger the capital efficiency and also the higher the APR will be. And if the ETH USDC pair stays within the range that you select, you will make a very solid amount on that liquidity provision. On the other hand, however, if the ETH USDC pool goes outside of this range, so for example, this is quoting the price of ETH, if the price of ETH goes above or below the range that you have selected to provide liquidity to, then you will have to pay a fee to rebalance your liquidity provision. And so the tighter the spreads that you select, the more that you're gonna have to come back to this and rebalance it in order to keep it in the range. Now, if you select a wider range, you won't have to come back as often to rebalance your position, but your APR or the amount that you're earning on the liquidity will go down. Now, aside from the fee and the precision of the liquidity pool, you also have to decide what range you want to provide liquidity in. And you can select that down here by choosing from the pre-selected options, or you can actually drag it by yourself to make a custom range. So the wider the range that you create, the less you're gonna have to come back to rebalance it, but the lower the APR. Now, the simplest way that I can explain this when we're talking about ETH and USDC, because this is the price of ETH that we're seeing in this chart here, is that under these parameters here, I would be providing liquidity between an ETH price of 1865 and 2782. So that means that if the price of ETH went down to 1865, then all of my liquidity would be shifted into ETH. I would have zero USDC and 100% ETH. But if the price of ETH goes all the way up to 2,782, then I would have zero ETH and 100% USDC. So the proportion of the liquidity that you provide shifts depending on the price of the asset. I know that this is getting a little bit complicated here, but since there's a lot of different options for what you can do here, I'm trying to explain it fully. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to select a 0.3% fee and a 0.6% precision. And I'm gonna set the price range between $2,000 ETH and 2,600 ETH, because if the price goes below 2,000, then I'm happy to have 100% of my position in ETH. And if it goes above 26 or 2,700, then I'm happy to have 100% of this position in USDC. And you have to just decide what you're comfortable with. So once you've selected all of the parameters for your liquidity pool, simply specify the amount that you want to deposit. So I'm going to deposit the full amount of USDC and it will automatically select for me an equivalent value of ETH. Then I just have to simply hit this button down here that says I have liquidity and it pops up in my wallet asking me to confirm the transaction. And in exchange for this, I will receive an NFT to my wallet that represents this liquidity position. So let's go ahead and confirm that. And if I hit view positions, I can now see my liquidity pool that I created. And if I hit on this button here, the edit icon, this is where I can track the pool. I can see what the min price is and the max price, as well as the current price. And so if it gets closer to one end of the range or another, then the amount of ETH or USDC that I have in the pool will shift one way or another. But I will also earn fees over time that I can come back and claim. And this is the NFT that I minted that represents all of these details. And when I want to withdraw it, I simply hit on the withdraw button and then I cash in that NFT and get my assets back. So that is how liquidity providing works. Hopefully it's not too complicated. If you want more detailed explanations, you can hit on this button down here that provides you with a full walkthrough on what it all means and how you can do it. And once you have done that and you've made a few swaps, then you can track your position on the leaderboard. And the more points that you collect over the next three months or so, I think will directly translate into a higher airdrop amount. So again, hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. Remember to do your own research, read through the documents on liquidity provision if you need a little bit more assistance on that, and good luck.